What's up, YouTube? We're the Secret Stash Bros, and we forgot to film our intro at the shop. So in this video, we're going to show you how to make a pop-top round table. This week, we're going to be making a round coffee table, or an oval coffee table, with a secret compartment in it. Yeah, and it might have an epoxy resin stain. We might make it a memory table thingy. We're not sure yet. If you're watching this, most likely you've seen the thumbnail, and you already know what we did. We don't know what we're doing, but now we're going to do it. Let's do it. Cue it. Alright, let's go. So before we started building, Dad made a template of how he wanted our table to look out of cardboard. We then took that template, cut it in half, placed it on top of the 3 8 plywood that we're using for our tabletop, and then traced it out with a pencil on both sides. Once we had our pencil lined, we took it over to the bandsaw and cut out a rough draft of the tabletop. Bit of a disclaimer here, we're actually making this table for some friends, and the rest of their furniture in their living room is made out of oak. So we grabbed some of the other boards that we had lying around that were oak, planed them on the planer, and got ready to make our rim. Now we're not sure if this was the best solution, but because we're making our rim with the other oak pieces that you saw us planing down, we needed a way to get those all the way around our tabletop. At first, we thought we were going to have to cut each trim piece out individually and make all these weird angle cuts to get it to go all the way around the perimeter of our table. Then we decided that the best way to probably accomplish our goal of saving wood and getting a nice round rim would be to take each oak piece that we planed and cut it into small portions that would fit evenly around the sides or what would be the perimeter of our table. After these pieces were done drying, we then took the tabletop and laid it over our soon-to-be rim, tracing it with a pencil. We then went along that line and carved out our awesome new trim piece with a jigsaw. To be honest, we kind of winged our inside edge. Dad just took his finger and kept it about an inch off of the outside edge and then ran the pencil all the way around it and then obviously cut it out with a jigsaw. Once we had that done, we sanded the inside edge with our oscillating sander. As for attaching our rim, we had to be extremely careful not to break it. It was one solid piece, but those pieces were made of individual pieces that were glued together. So if you're going to try this yourself, make sure that you don't put any screws in the spots where you glued two pieces together. Because we had this happen twice actually, and we ended up splitting the board. So just make sure you know where you're putting your screws. While we were waiting for our edge to dry, we went to work on creating our legs. As you would expect, we used the same oak that we used for our rim. All we did was cut 12 pieces to a length of 15 inches and then glued them all together. And while we were waiting for those to dry, we took our tabletop over to the table router and just routed it along the bottom edge just to kind of give it a small overhang. Once our legs were done drying, I went ahead with a paint scraper and removed as much glue as I could before we sent it through the planer. This way we just have a lesser chance of chipping the blade. Since we couldn't actually attach our legs yet because the rest of our frame wasn't constructed, we went ahead and started to build our box. We cut out all the pieces that we needed out of our 3 8 plywood. Our plan for attaching our legs to our box was not that they were going to be attached on the outside, but on the inside. But before we could do that, we had to square up our box with a brace that you see us adding here. Then we marked out the areas for our legs to insert to on the bottom of our box and then cut them out on the scroll saw. While dad was cutting out the holes for our legs, I went ahead and put some nice router decorations on all four pieces. To attach our legs to our box, we actually had to take our bottom off and then mark out some nice pilot holes where we could stick some screws in. The next couple segments are really the parts of this project that took us the longest to design. Because we have to put a secret compartment in this table, 
we had to create wings to conceal the bottom lip. So once again, we grabbed some more oak boards and joined the edges. Then we ripped some of them on the table saw and glued them back together so that we would have some wider pieces to fit underneath our table. Obviously, once again, we had to wait for these to dry. So we took our circular sander and went around the tabletop and the edges to get them all nice and smooth. After that, we grabbed our router again and went around the entire perimeter of the trim piece that we added earlier to give it a nice decorative look. One other thing that we noticed about our trim piece was that the inside corner had a lot of glue still showing and we couldn't get it off. So we just grabbed our wood burner and went around the entire inside of the edge to try and mask it. In an effort to try and match our friend's furniture, we used two coats of polyurethane and it seemed to work pretty good. However, the boards that we glued together earlier are about to come up again. The purpose of these boards are to be support wings, basically. Essentially, they'll be sitting underneath our tabletop, but in a much more difficult fashion. As I said earlier, this is a hidden compartment table. So in order to hide our seam from our tabletop, we needed a recessed area to cover it up. In order to get these recessed areas, we had to attach our boards with clamps and screws before we did anything too technical. We did this to create super precise pilot holes that would be right below where we're going to router our boards. That's right, we essentially had to router these entire boards. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, you'll see in a moment. Here, we're just tracing the outline of our table to get the sections that we need to router. I'm not going to show you everything that Dad did when he was routering these, because that would take way too long and it would be super, super boring. So essentially, Dad just went back and forth on every single piece until his thumbs fell off. Finally, after about two hours of routering, we finally got around to cutting out our pieces. You didn't want none of this scrap wood, right, Dad? In these clips right here, we're showing why we had to drill those pilot holes into the tiny little section below our routered area. If we didn't drill these out earlier, we wouldn't have been able to attach our wings to the table frame. One problem that we encountered was that when we attached our wings, they were kind of sagging down a little bit, leaving this big gap right here that was really noticeable. So in order to lift these up, we had to make some braces for the bottoms of our wings. These were simply placed right in the middle and did a great job of holding them up. After we finished putting those in, all that was left to do was router the inside edge, and yeah, that was pretty much it. Sorry there's no dramatic reveal on this project. We're testing a new way of formatting our videos. So if you like the way we did this one where we didn't talk that much, uh, let us know down in the comments. And if you really like the video, hit the like button. And uh, yeah, we didn't uh, get an intro or an outro. Well, we, we didn't get an outro because uh, um, I didn't have the mic on. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, hope you'll come back. Thanks. Bye.